Greetings everyone and welcome to my channel. I'm your host Captain Rye and today's YouTube video has got me back in World of Warships. This time I'm playing the Z-52 Tier 10 German Destroyer, the Destroyer with a Citadel, basically, as we'll see later in this battle. As the battle gets underway, it's Sea of Fortune, it's Domination Match Mode, and I've spawned closest to the Sea Cap Point, so I'm going to go ahead and head up to the Sea Cap Point and see what I can capture. As the battle gets underway here, both teams are fairly equal on number of destroyers and number of radar ships, including both teams having a Missouri, and we're going to see that Missouri in a little bit. Both teams have two Tier 10 destroyers on them, and this is going to be somewhat important, because while my team has me and the Z-52, and it's a perfect destroyer for hunting down other Tier 10 destroyers because of that Hydro, the enemy team has the Tier 10 Pan-Asia destroyer, basically the Pan-Asia version of the gearing. Now, if you're not fully familiar with the new Pan-Asia line, once you get up to those high tiers, I think tier 8 and up, you can choose to replace your smokescreen generator with radar, with a short-term radar consumable. I don't know if he's got that, and I kind of hope I don't find out in this battle. As I push up here into C cap point, the enemy team is already well in the process of capturing A. If you look at the mini map there, yes, I know it's small you'll notice that we have one destroyer headed up into the A-cap point, and he's actually managed to spot the enemy destroyers that are capturing A. Unfortunately for him, he's isolated. He's all alone, and he definitely doesn't have backup coming up with him, because most of the team has gone over to C and to B. However, he did at the very least manage to drive the enemy out of the A cap point. And at this point, it looks like the enemy is not even going to bother coming over to sea. This is going to be good for me. It means I can cap unmolested. More importantly, it means our team is going to get the first cap and start gaining points. Unfortunately, we did lose an enemy ship, or we lost a friendly destroyer right off the bat. And so if you're on my team and you're in a destroyer and you die first, you're getting reported. And that's just because you shouldn't ever put yourself in a destroyer into a position where you can die first. Yes, I understand that random torpedoes happen, but in this case, the guy had every opportunity to realize he was basically sailing into a death trap. Enemy smokescreen up here. I'm not sure what ship laid that smokescreen, but I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to get torpedoes off into it anyway, because there was an enemy Ibuki who was partially spotted in that smoke screen headed in that direction i'm gonna go ahead get those torps out and hope that maybe he's just kind of hanging around in there possibly maybe see if i can hit whatever laid the smoke screen would be great especially if it's one of the destroyers in the meantime our team is in the process of capping b and the player on the team that's capping B effectively is our Shimakaze. Now, he's put himself into a perfect position here to basically put torpedoes down that channel there where that French baguette is starting to push up and potentially torpedo anything that comes down that line. Now, my torpedoes do go through the smoke screen there. The smoke screen is dissipating, and there is the enemy Ibuki, but it doesn't look like my torpedoes are going to reach him as he managed to basically turn wide and run away. So, all my torpedoes miss him by miles. In the meantime, we've managed to capture the B cap point. The enemy team is finally starting to capture the A cap point, and they've actually managed to kill yet another ship. So this is unfortunate for my team, because that ship definitely would have been useful later in the game. I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to get torpedoes off down that channel. There is that French baguette sitting in there, but there was another ship that was also spotted there. That was a British cruiser pushing up down that channel there. And so the Shimakaze manages to torpedo kill that cruiser, but he's cut his torpedoes out on that spread, and that's not the only cruiser he manages to kill with torpedoes. So good job to the Shimakaze for almost getting a double strike there, but at the very least taking out two very, very dangerous cruisers. Now, I'm going to go ahead and post up myself in a position here in the B cap point where basically I know that the enemy team is now going to have to come. Because we have two of the caps, we're up on points. Because we've killed two of their cruisers, well, they've only managed to kill a destroyer and a battleship. It effectively means that they're going to have to come and challenge us at the B cap point. And that's probably going to be their destroyers. 
I'm still full strength and I still have my hydro, my smoke screen and my engine boost capability. So I can pretty much deal with any destroyer that comes my direction. And with any luck, it'll be something that I know I can kill like a sneaky Japanese torpedo boat, who by the way, has been spotted on the south end of the B camp point. Get torpedoes off out there. I was actually hoping that the Iowa would continue around the headland of that island, but he actually is grinding on the beach there. Managed to hit a rocky outcropping, so I fire off instead at the Kerfurst that's pushing up there, but that Kerfurst is definitely no fool. He is pretty much going to avoid all of those torpedoes by turning in. That is the downside, though, to only having eight of them. You don't quite get as big a spread. Now, because I know that there was that easier to kill destroyer down here i'm gonna actually head down here you can see our baltimore is effectively running away that's smart on his part because he's got a lot of angry ships including a zhao including that missouri pushing towards him and he definitely doesn't need to be spotted managed to connect with that curve first with just one torpedo caused flooding but as you can see he manages to put that flooding out pretty much right away, so there's nothing I can do about that. There's that destroyer, very low health there, was spotted briefly, has dropped off detectability, but I know he's there, and I know he could be nearly anywhere. Get my torpedoes off towards that Missouri, unfortunately managed to nearly beach myself in the process doing that, and as you can see, I'm being detected and I'm being targeted. That is the enemy destroyer. So go ahead, fire off torpedoes at the Missouri, and then start opening up with my guns on this Yugamo. Now I'm being detected, that's the Missouri. The Missouri is well within radar range at this point, and I'm about to take some pretty nasty hits here as I continue to try and put rounds down on this guy and finish him off come on you see here this is a problem that i actually have with this particular destroyer is that the guns they do fine when going left and right but not so much when going long they tend to spread out a little too much when somebody is running away when their tail or bow onto me and we're going to see more of that later now i am being targeted by a couple of mean nasty ships zao takes shots at me fortunately he doesn't royally wreck me but there's the citadel i'm talking about the Missouri manages to hit me with armor piercing and they just go right through me cause a lot of damage fortunately I did connect with a torpedo on that Missouri and you can see here he's not really trying too hard to take a face of action so get my ship slightly turned around get those torpedoes off good news about the Z-52 it doesn't have a quick a torpedo reload they don't do a lot of damage and you don't get too many of them compared to other ships but you do have a fast torpedo reload Get myself a beach and go over the speed bump here of the sinking friendly cruiser. I think that was the Minotaur, possibly the Neptune. He's down and out, but those torpedoes, they are on the way. Speaking of torpedoes, there are torpedoes coming in there, and that tells me, because they were the deep water ones, that that enemy destroyer, that Pan-Asia destroyer, well, he is somewhere back over there. There's that destroyer yet again, very low health. I'd like him dead. Managed to connect a few more torpedo hits on that Missouri and unfortunately because he repaired the flooding earlier his repair time his damage control is not available so he's going to continue flooding for quite a while so this is just going to be nice tasty damage enemy team starts capping the b cap point i can't see what's capping it that tells me it's probably going to be the gearing and right now given how much health i have and the position of the rest of the ships on my team I don't want to go deal with that gearing. Instead, what I'd like to do is head back down here and try and kill some other ships. Now that Missouri, very low health, has finally stopped the flooding. He's got an island between him and the friendly Missouri, but there's a rune who's just putting shot after shot out on him, those armor piercing specifically. So you can see there, those shots out from the rune, are they gonna finish him off? They are, so the rune manages to claim that kill. Good for the rune. And he's going to be able to do more and more of this quite well. Now, I've also come down here because I didn't fully realize that that enemy, Yugamo, was already sunk. Somebody's already killed him, but I actually thought he might still be down here. Instead, I'm going to go ahead and try to get my torpedoes off at a couple of different ships there. There's a battleship back down there, and there's that Zhao. Briefly detected there. That had me a little concerned. I thought it might be the Yugamo. But no, as I push up towards the rocks here and beach myself, that's when the gearing pops up, and that's who's detected me. 
back up off the rocks, get behind the rocks, and now that gearing can't see me. So fortunately, those ships down there, including the battleships, they can't hurt me. Gonna go ahead, start getting moving forward. My hydroacoustic is almost available again. I still have my smoke screen, but I don't wanna use it just yet. I wanna make sure that I'm in a good position. At this point, the enemy team is currently down on ships, but as you can see, they're very good at you know, countering. This is a very close game. My team is still up on points because we had two of the caps for so long. Now, I'm going to push up here. I'm going to go wide around this island initially, and that's when the smoke screen pops up. And that tells me that the gearing is sitting there. If he's popped smoke, it means he wants to get torpedoes off and he wants to start shooting his guns. The reason he does that, well, it's the same reason I do it. It's simply because I don't want to be the target of a battleship shooting guns at me, especially not in a thick boat. Managed to connect a torpedo downrange on somebody. That makes me very, very happy. You can see there he flooded for a second, put that flooding out, and now I'm gonna push up here and I can see the shots coming out of that smoke screen. So I know roughly where the gearing's at. Fire off torpedoes and I'm gonna get nice and close before I pop my hydro. And I also want to get nice and close. So I'm gonna pop my smoke screen as well as I slam on my brakes here and open fire so that the enemy ships, again, the Zhao and that battleship behind me, can't shoot at me. So pop my Hydro. He is spotted. He's just sitting there, too. And now that he's spotted by my Hydro, the Turpits can start hitting him. Hit him with the Torpedo. Not enough to kill him outright. He's almost dead. Come on, get those shots out there. Come on, get him out. Nope, not quite enough. Kill denied by me. Friendly Turpits, however, he's going to take that kill, which is, you know, that's good for him. And that means there's just one enemy destroyer left. And he's that tier 10 Pan Asia destroyer. So at the very least, I don't have to worry about his torpedoes. Now, enemy North Carolina back there, very low health. Our rune is shooting at him. The rune is very good at this. He's, he's running away, but the rune's got two of its gun turrets in the back there. So he manages to take out that North Carolina. This is excellent for him, but the Zhao is going to return fire, and he's going to finish him off. So now it's three versus three. But you can see there, our Yamato, well, he's not doing very well. And there's the Pan-Asia destroyer. He's half health. So technically, right now, I could possibly take him because we're about the same HP. The problem is I don't have a lot of backup here and he's basically a gearing so my high explosive and armor piercing aren't going to do as much damage as I'd like to. Specifically the high explosive is probably going to shatter on his hull armor and the armor piercing if he's bow on is just going to bounce. Not only that, as I mentioned, when somebody's bow on or stern on to me, the shots out of this ship aren't as accurate. Get my speed boost active, I'm going to head towards the A cap point. I'm going to prevent the enemy team from gaining any more points because honestly, I don't expect our Yamato to survive. Partly because there's an Ibuki shooting at him. Actually, he's shooting at the Turpets, but also because that Pan-Asia destroyer is back there as well. And you see this Ibuki's very low health possibly could take him with the German armor piercing, but I'd have to get really close, and I don't want to do that. He's got his catapult fighter up, so he's looking for fighters, and he's probably got hydro up as well. My hydro's just ended, and he's behind an island. I don't want to risk it. Instead, I'm going to go ahead and sit in the A cap point. I'm going to cap it, and I'm going to prevent the enemy team from gaining any additional points. But you can see here, this guy behind that island, well, he's not in a position to shoot at anything anymore, especially not our turpits. And since our turpits is closing in on that Pan Asia Destroyer, he really is going to need all the help he can get from that Ibuki, who is, by the way, repairing now. So not something I definitely wanted to go around an island and find a much healthier Ibuki at point blank range. But you'll notice that Pan Asia Destroyer, he's in a smoke screen. Well, that's good for me because that tells me he doesn't have radar. And that is an excellent thing because that means if I run into him, I can smoke up, pop my Hydro, and hopefully finish him off. Now this Ibuki, he came out far enough, finally saw the torpedoes, and gets finished off there. I become the last surviving team member as that Turpets die right before I killed that Ibuki. Now, this is a bit of a shame for me because, you see, it was 1 versus 3 there. If it had been 1 versus 4, I would have been in real contention for a solo warrior. But as it is, I'm now 1 versus 2... And I now know where the Zhao is, because the Zhao who was last seen to the south, well, he's obviously capping the C cap point. I don't know where that Pan-Asian destroyer is. 
but I do know that he's going to have to go either for B or for A, and I'm kind of hoping he's going to come right through this channel, based on where he was last seen, and come for the A cap point, and try and challenge me, especially because I'm the last player alive on the team, and this was where I was effectively last seen, last seen capping A. So I'm going to push up here, I'm going to get between these two islands in this channel, and I'm going to take a speculative shot with my torpedoes, just in case, just because I'm not entirely sure where he's at. I know where he was last spotted, but I don't know where he was at outright. So, as I come up here, I'm going to get shots off, and right when I fire off those torpedoes, that's when the B cap point turns. Well, the C cap point was just captured, so I know it wasn't the Zhao who's come over to the B cap point. That tells me exactly where that destroyer is now. So they've both revealed themselves. There's not a lot of time left in this battle, and there's not a lot of time left that I really need to survive. A lesser player, however, is probably going to go and bug out. The problem is you got to look at that points total. I'm not sure if we have enough of a points lead here for me to bug out, run and hide, and maintain the lead for the remaining amount of time. More importantly, I don't know if the enemy is going to come and capture A, and with all three of those, I'm definitely not sure if we have enough time to keep the points lead. So I know that the enemy is going to have to come to the A cap point. I know they're going to come here. Because they have to if they want to cap. And as you can see, I'm right. Sure enough, spotted. Pop my hydro, pop my smoke screen, slam on my brakes, start getting shots off. Fire off a set of torpedoes out there. I'm going to get a second set as soon as they're available. Now, this destroyer captain makes a critical error here. You see him slam on his brakes while well, he's trying to decide what to do. But he's well inside my hydro. And I'm still shooting at him. So that means I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cause him more damage, and he can't return fire. Managed to earn my Confederate medal, torpedoes are out, am I going to be able to hit him and take him out of the game? Come on, can I do it? No, he manages to torpedo beats very, very close, trying to finish him off here. Come on, shots out, but you can see there the shots are just not behaving themselves. He is managing to connect one or two shots here, he's very, very low health. Come on, finish him off so low health. Start moving forward. I've got my speed boost up. Now, the reason I'm moving forward, you can see there, I'm detected by him. He's close enough, but I was targeted by two ships. That tells me enemy cruiser somewhere nearby, and there's the Zhao. Unfortunately, I leave my smoke screen a little too early, but perhaps not early enough there, because look how close he is. He's definitely going to have hydroacoustic. So if I had stayed in there any longer, he was going to see me that way. Drop off detectability here. Shots coming in. Please don't die. Yes, survive just barely. And... Not only did I survive here, but my team still maintains control of the A cap point. Plus, opening up the distance here, all I have to do is effectively survive just long enough to accrue those last few points. Can I do it? Get torpedoes off anyway, just in case you never know. He might go through there. Come on, smoke screen's dissipating. Doesn't matter. We win on points by just that barely little bit. Closest I've probably ever come to a solo warrior. Honestly, I think they need to downgrade the requirements to one versus three. It'd be a little bit easier to get there. 125,000 damage done in that game. A good number of torpedo hits. Two ships killed, even though I really should have had perhaps three. Maybe four would have been nice. But three full base captures, and that's going to put me top of the team for XP earned at over 2,300 base with our Shimakaze who came in second with just shy of 2,000 base XP. So good job on them. And of course, a shout out to that Gearing, who had four kills when he met his end at my hands. Well, mostly my hands. Anyway, that's it for today's video, folks. If you like the video, hit that like button. Hit the subscribe button. Leave a comment down below. If you'd like to get semi-regular channel news and updates, you can do so by liking and following me on Facebook. If you'd like to help support me in the channel and gain supporter perks, you can do so by following me on or by supporting me on Patreon. If you've got a replay like this one that you'd like to see featured on my channel, you can send it to my email. And if you'd like to watch me play various games live, more than likely back up again after the holiday season, you can do so by following me on Twitch. You can find the links for all of those in the video description down below. And as always, I'll see you next time. This is Captain Rye, signing off.